Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 10, text 17, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Katam vidyamaham yogin stvam sada parichintiyam keshu keshu cha bhaveshu chincho si bhagavan maya. In the previous two chapters previous to this, Lord Krishna has described the process of remembering him at the time of death. And at the end of chapter 9, the chapter previous to this, Lord Krishna has stated a very well-known verse that appears almost exactly the same twice in Bhagavad Gita. What is the last verse of chapter 9? Who can say? Without looking at the book. <laughs> say it. <laughs> and say it. Say it fully. Manmana bhava mad bhakto. Mame vaishasi yogdvaivam atmanam mad parayanaha. Yeah. Krishna says, always think of me, become my devotee. So Krishna is recommending, think of me. In chapter 8, he's especially stressing thinking of him at the time of death. And in chapter 9, at the end of chapter, well, particularly at the end of chapter 9, he says to always think of him. And thinking of him, thinking of him at the time of death, that will be affected by thinking of him always throughout life. Because what we think of during our life, that we tend to think of at the time of death. So Krishna says, if we think of him at the time of death, then we attain to his nature. What is that verse where he says that? Yeah, let someone else, let's see, who's studying the books. prayati jajyante Krishna says, at the time of death, one who remembers me quitting his body, then he attains to my nature, of this there is no doubt. So uh, he describes how he should be thought of. Kavim Puranam Anushashitaram Anoraniyamsam Anusmaradyaha Hmm? Sarvasadhataram achintya rupam adityavaram tamasakkarastat. So he should, that supreme person, that supremely knowledgeable person, he should be thought of. He should always be remembered. He is the most subtle principle, he is within everything and everyone. He has form, rupam. Some people say that the Supreme has no form. That is true in as much as he has no material form, but his form is fully spiritual. It is atintya rupa. It is not conceivable by mundane intelligence. It is effulgent like the sun, and thus beyond the darkness and ignorance of this material world. So in this chapter 8, Krishna describes how the yogis, by uh, refining their consciousness, they can think of Krishna at the time of death. So, here Arjuna is asking Krishna how we can think of him, how, how we can conceive of him. Actually, in English, this question, how we can think of him, can be understood to be what is the process of and what is the... Dharana, what is the concept? So here I'm meaning, what is the, what, con, how should we conceive of him? Krishna has already told that. Kavim Puranam, this, the, the, the supreme person who is transcendental, who is like the sun, who is inconceivable, who is the most subtle. But Arjuna is considering that for ordinary people, it will be very difficult for them to think of Krishna like this. Because uh, this achintya rupa, that's, that can be understood only by persons who have a, this inconceivable form, can only be understood by persons at a very high level of spiritual understanding. 
And Arjuna has some insight into how wonderful Krishna is. And he's just thinking, how can the ordinary people think of Krishna? Ordinary people think of ordinary things. But how will they understand Krishna, who is beyond everything ordinary? So in this chapter in particular, and in elsewhere in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes how we can understand him as represented within the opulence of this material world. And many examples are given in this chapter of how Krishna's vibhuti or his, his opulences are represented within this material world. Who knows any of the vibhutis mentioned in this vibhuti yoga chapter of the Bhagavad Gita? Who can say? Well, not exactly. That's from Srimad Bhagavatam. Vaishnavanam Yatha Shambhu is from Bhagavatam, actually. It says that among Vaishnavas... Among the, Mandavas, I am Vajana. Yes, that's good. Pandavanam Dhananjaya. That's giving Arjuna some encouragement. There's always some rivalry between Arjuna and Bhima, that who is the best? Who won the war? Was it Arjuna or Bhima? They were discussing afterwards. Krishna came along and showed them it was neither of them, it was him, Krishna, who did it. So what else? What others do we have? From chapter 10 of the Toman. So Himalaya is mentioned as what? Huh? Immovable. Stavaranam Himalaya. What else? Meru Shikarinamaham. So Meru among mountains. But then already Himalayas is said. So Reason is, Stavaranam Himalayam means Himalayas don't move. But Meru can move. Who can think of an example of when Meru was moving? Can anyone think? What about the Kurma Avatara? Then Meru was used for the... Then what else? Ashvatam Sarvavrikshanam. No cheating. No cheating. Hey, 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 hey. No cheating. <laughs> now what, now this is for the, this for the materialistic people. What about among the demons? How can you see Krishna among the demons? Prahlad Maharaj represents Krishna among the demons. What's the Sanskrit? Prahladas Chasmi Daityanam. What about animals? Which animal represents Krishna? What is it? The cow? Cow? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. What does Krishna say in Bhagavad Gita? Mriganam uh, Mrigendroham. Among the animals, I am the king of the animals. So what's the king of the animals? Lion. So, if you see a lion, you can think of Krishna. That would be good, because if you see a lion, it's good to think of Krishna, because you might not see much else in that body. While you're being eaten by the lion, you can think of Krishna. So, in this way, Arjuna is giving so many ways we can think of Krishna. Sorry, Arjuna is inviting Krishna to reveal to us so many ways in which we can think of Krishna. And Krishna has, even previous to this, given us so many ways in which we can remember him. Now, if we look outside here, we can see there's very bright sunlight. So that is also representing Krishna. Prabhasmi Shashi Suryayo and the light of the moon, that is also representing Krishna. Nowadays you don't see because of the neon lights in the city. You can't tell the difference. Yesterday was Amavasya. So if you're in the country area at night during Amavasya, then you can't see anything. But when you go on the Purnima night, then you can see very clearly everything, as long as there's no clouds. So in this way, we can remember Krishna through his representations in the material energy. However, for Arjuna... Such remembering Krishna, such a manner of remembering Krishna was not necessary. 
because Arjuna anyway always thinks of Krishna. Arjuna is a pure devotee of Krishna and that is why Krishna is speaking Bhagavad Gita to him. Bhakto sime sakha cheti rahasyam hiyatat uttamam Lord Krishna told Arjuna, I am speaking Bhagavad Gita to you because you are my great devotee and my very dear friend. So when Krishna is telling Arjuna, Manmara Bhavamad Bhaktaha, think of me and become my devotee, actually he doesn't really have to tell Arjuna because Arjuna is always thinking of Krishna. Yeah. Now there is a difference between thinking of Krishna as the light of the sun and the moon and thinking of him as Pallad among the demons and thinking of him with pure devotion as Arjuna does. One manner of thinking is theoretical, the other is impelled by pure love. Actually one cannot fully be absorbed in thought of Krishna unless one loves him. It is not simply by theoretical thinking one cannot always think of him. That's why our beloved Srila Prabhupada would always say that it is not enough to say that God is great, one must know how He is great. What is the greatness of God? Everyone will say God is great. But when we hear of His Trivik Ramlila, we will begin to understand how great He is. That with starting off with the form Vama, dwarf form, then with two steps he covered the whole universe. And then his third step, most important step, on the head of Bali Maharaj. Now, how is the third step, small step on the head of Bali, more important than two steps covering the whole universe? Bhagavan is showing his greatness, his Bhakta Bhatsalya that with two steps he took everything away from Bali Maharaj. And with one more step, theoretically showing himself to be possessing Bali Maharaj, he became this possessed by Bali Maharaj. Because Bali Maharaj completely gave up the sense of aham mameti, I, me and mine, and completely surrendered to Krishna with full sharanagati. So Krishna gave himself to Bali Maharaj. And Vamandev agreed to become the servant of Bali Maharaj as his doorman at the Sutala planet. So one time Ravana came and he wanted to harass Bali Maharaj. And the doorman, little, you know, little Vaman told, hey, stop. Ravana looked at him, ah! Well, just walked straight past. Then Vamandev gave him a kick. And when Ravan saw him coming to kick, he must have thought, this is a joke. This, what's, what's, this, what's he going to do, kicking me? But he didn't know that that foot, that, that footstep is enough to cover the whole, half the universe with one step. So the mighty Ravana, with the kick from this little Vaman, he got kicked to the other side of the universe and he never came back. Ravana was so fortunate, he got the Lord's lotus foot dust. So in this way, by hearing about the different, the, the pastimes of the different incarnations of the Lord, then one becomes attached to him and develops one's love for him. And this is the essence of the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is also known as Gita Upanishad. Upanishad means that which is taught by guru to disciple, by the disciple coming close and hearing. And we find throughout Bhagavad Gita that Lord Krishna uh, uses the Upanishadic language. Just like that shloka we are quoting, Kaving Purana Manusha Shitaram Anora This is all Upanishadic language. But the uh, Saramsa of Bhagavad Gita is to love Krishna. Mostly the students of the Upanishads, they are on a theoretical platform. They are interested in concepts and theories of transcendence. But they do not know that beyond the concepts and theories is Krishna who is to be loved. They think that Jnana is more important than Bhakti. They do not know the glories of Bhakti. So Arjuna, he is a natural devotee of Krishna. And therefore he always thinks of Krishna. Actually everyone is a natural devotee of Krishna. But presently we are in the unnatural situation of not thinking of Krishna. So to help people 
who are in this unnatural platform of thinking of matter, Arjuna is requesting Krishna to tell us how he can be perceived within matter. But when Krishna says, Manmana Bhava Madhbhakto, this means that we should think of him as Krishna, Shamasunda, Murlida. We should not think of the lion or the Himalayas or Meru, but we should think of Venangvananta Maravinda Dalaya Taksham Barhavatam Samasitam Buddha Sundarangam. We should think of the beautiful bluish boy who is playing on a flute, whose eyes are like newly blossomed lotus flowers, who is decorated with a peacock feather in his hair, and whose form, yeah, I said bluish form, means like that of a, uh, of a rain cloud. The, the, it's the color of his form is compared to that of a rain cloud. So how we can think of Krishna is uh, exemplified by the Vrajavasis, who they would have no interest in hearing about how Krishna is represented as Meru, as a lion, or any of these things. They simply loved Krishna. Even they were not very much concerned with his opulences. That is pure love, in which their full attention is simply on Krishna. This was exemplified when Krishna was caught by the Kalyanag. So many leelas of Bhagavan are described in Shastra. Shinu Sukadam Shubadam Bhavasaram. But that by hearing them, we become very happy and our life becomes very auspicious in this, in this otherwise unhappy and inauspicious world of birth and death. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the master of all opulences, while, mm, while performing his Balya Leela in Vrindavan, would every day take out the cows to the pasturing grounds, along with his young boy friends, and while herding the cows, they would play various games, which might appear to be like play of ordinary boys. But this is all on the platform Ananda Chinmaya Rasa. This is the completely spiritual platform of pure love for Krishna. And just as the devotees, they love Krishna, so Krishna loves his devotees. Now, it so happened that one extremely ferocious and poisonous snake had taken up residence within a lake that was formed within the Yamuna River. That snake was called Kali, which is also a name that the people in Orissa called Krishna. They call Jagannath Kali, it means black. So this snake was so poisonous that just by its breathing, the air became polluted. And all the water of that part of the Yamuna became completely polluted. And the, even the air rising from that water was so poisonous that if any bird flew over it, it would fly, fly and doom be falling down dead. So one day when Krishna and his cowherd boyfriends and the cows, they're all feeling very hot, so they went to the Yamuna to drink water. They drank the water and they all died immediately. And Krishna, just by looking at them, bring them brought them all back to life again. So Krishna, understanding that this snake is causing so much disturbance, decided to chastise Kaliya. So climbing in a tree, he dived into the water. And Kaliya was upset. Who's coming to disturb me? Who dares to disturb me? Meanwhile, back in the cowherd village, there were many inauspicious signs. Ladies, the left side started twitching. In the, it was unseasonable stormy weather. So all the people thought, oh, something must have happened to Krishna. Because all the time there were so many demons coming to attack Krishna. And Mother Yashoda used to think that because I worshipped Lord Narayan when I was a Kumari, therefore, because of that punya, Lord Narayan is protecting Krishna. 
But she thought, now it must be a very serious situation. So all the Rajvasis, they went to find out, where is Krishna? And they followed his footsteps. Because there was a rule in Vrindavan, Krishna, Krishna used to go no shoes. He thought, his parents wanted to give him shoes. He said, well, if you want to give me shoes, you have to give all the cows shoes also. Why? Because we're serving the cows, so if you give me shoes, you have to give them also. So he went barefoot. And there was a rule in Vrindavan or a convention that no one would step, not, none of the animals or human beings, they would, where there's Krishna's footprint, they would just leave that there. So they could see what is Krishna's footprint. So it was very easy to find Krishna's footprint. It has special signs on it. Who knows some of the signs on Krishna's footprints? Shankar, someone said. Lotus. What else? Flag, barley corn, spear. Spear, it's veil, is it, in Tamil? No, veil, veil. <laughs> Ankushan, you said. That's another, that's something else. <laughs> then, uh, so, they followed and they came to the Kaliahrad, or the lake in the Yamuna, where Krishna, he was fighting with Kali. Actually, it was just sport for Krishna. It was sport for Krishna. Kaliya had so many heads and Krishna was dancing on each of his heads. One head would come up to bite him and Krishna would put his head, foot and push his head down. Another head would come up and he'd push it down. And this way, automatically it became like dancing. But the Vrajvasis, they were very afraid for Krishna. Then Krishna, just to enact his Leela, he allowed himself to be caught by Kaliya. Kaliya wrapped around and around and around. And then Kaliya dragged him under the water. And all the Vrajvasis, they fainted. Especially Mother Yashoda, she was most distraught. And she thought, then she got up and she thought, now, I, now Krishna's, he's finished, so I'll also enter this poisonous water and die here. But only Balaram was saying, don't, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Because Balaram knows that no harm can come to Krishna. So the Vrajvasis, thinking that Krishna must now be dying, they are also dying. So this is the example of full absorption in thinking of Krishna with love. Krishna says, Manmana Bhava Bhakta, always think of me, be my devotee. The Vrajvasis, they are the ideal of this. So by remembering Krishna's pastimes and, the, and his devotees, we can also have the same inspiration and inclination to love Krishna in the same way. So Krishna sometimes appears to be very cruel in his behavior. That he knew that the Vrajvasis, their heart was breaking because they, they were so afraid for him, but still he remained underwater to make their, to make their feelings stronger and stronger and stronger. He deliberately let them be in more anxiety because that was the anxiety of love. He wanted their love to increase more and more and more. So eventually Krishna, seeing that they, they could not tolerate this feeling of grief for Krishna anymore, he came up from the water dragging Kaliya with him. And seeing him alive, who they thought must be dead, all the Rajvasis felt as if their life had come back. And at that time, unseen to all the other Vrajvasis, Krishna took the gopis and danced with them, Ras Lila, on the heads of Kaliya. And then the Nagapatnis, who are the wives of Kaliya, who are great devotees, they prayed to Krishna that, all right, please, you know, we know he's a rascal, but he's our husband and we're your devotees, so please don't punish him anymore. Actually, we don't know whether you're punishing him or benedicting him. Because the yogis, they go through many austerities and still they can, they can hardly begin to understand what is the glory of your lotus feet. But this, our husband, he's just a rascal, he's causing trouble to others. And you've put your feet on his head again and again and again. What mercy you're giving him? So in this way, 
the devotees of Krishna are always thinking of him and he's always thinking of them. After this traumatic experience, they all felt it was evening time, they're a long way from the village, so they're all feeling very tired. So they decided to just rest that night on the bank of the, in the forest on the bank of the Yamuna. Then there was a tremendous fire. All the forest was burning. So they turned to Krishna. Krishna, you have to save us again. We have no other hope but you. So Krishna opened his mouth and swallowed all the fire. And then they all went back the next morning playing their flutes back to the village. So this way, uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, we hear how the devotees are always thinking of Krishna. How they simply love Krishna. This is our goal. The Krishna Bhakti, it's not just theoretical. It's not just philosophical. Philosophy is necessary. Without philosophy, then there will only be sentiment. But the aim of the devotees is to become devotees of Krishna's devotees. Especially those devotees who are so much in love with Krishna that they don't even care whether he's God or not. They don't, they're so much in love with him, they don't even care whether he's God or not. Just like when Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in his childhood, just as when he was Krishna, he was very naughty boy. And his father, Jagannath Mishra, would chase him with a stick. You get very angry with him. Why are you misbehaving? Now I'll teach you a lesson. So one time at night, within a dream, one deva came to Jagannath Mishra and said, you don't punish that boy. He is the supreme personality of Godhead. He is the source of all the universe. Creation, maintenance and destruction of all the universe is going by his wish alone. He is the source of the impersonal Brahma. All the rishis and munis and yogis, they all aspire to serve him. So, Jagannath Vishnu is listening and saying, Amma, Amma, yes, yes, okay. He <laughs> say, well, say, well, you see, he might be God, he might be the Supreme Lord, he might be the source of all the universe. Okay, I accept that. But he's my son and he's very naughty and I'm his father and it's my duty to punish him. Otherwise he'll grow up to be very bad. So, in this way, the pure love of the devotees that <coughs> overcomes their vision of him as the Supreme Lord. So particularly this standard of love of Krishna, this bhakti, has been taught by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For those who are in materialistic consciousness, they, or, or they need to see uh, how great is he in terms of his material opulences. And pure devotees, they also see the Lord everywhere. Just like when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was passing through Jarikanda, he would see when he, when he saw the forest, he thought, this is Vrindavan, this is the forest of Vrindavan. And whenever he saw a hill, he would think this is Govardhan hill. So everything that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw, that reminded him of Krishna directly. So he wanted to develop this vision, that wherever we go, whatever we do, we're always thinking of Krishna with pure love. That is the perfection of life. That Arjuna, he is naturally possessed of. And Arjuna, by giving a start to the materialistic people, he wants to give them a, a way they can begin to revive their pure love for Krishna. <coughs> Hare Krishna. Is there any question about this? <laughs> Just pick this book up, that's Bhagavad Gita, no? That's Bhagavad Gita? Please take off the book. Yeah, please you can repeat the question and then in Tamil and English. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that when they come here, it's not that the spiritual world becomes empty. There's a sign on the door. Come back after two weeks. There's no such sign on the door. It's going on. Both places. Actually, the Lord's pastimes are going on in unlimited places. Because by the principle of man mana bhavamad bhakto, always think of me and become my devotee, the pastimes of the Lord are always being enacted within the hearts of pure devotees. What is maha maya and what is yoga maya? So how do you all like this new facility? I think it's much better than the other place we were renting previous to this. What do you think? The only thing is that so many of you, you are coming to that other place. You're from the other side of town. So now you have to come this long distance. Well, I have a solution. I have a suggested solution to this problem. If we make everyone in Velo Krishna conscious, and then the whole town will be Krishna conscious, then every house will be Krishna conscious. Then the, there's no problem. But I think we have a lot of work to do to affect that. One thing, we have to distribute these books of Srila Prabhupada very intensively throughout this town and area. This Bhagavad Gita, Unmai Uravil, all the books. Today we are speaking from Krishna Lila. We should distribute this Krishna book also so people can understand how wonderful is Krishna. There's so many important books, Science of Self-Realization. Now the whole Bhagavatam set is available in Tamil. Who's got the whole Bhagavatam set in their house? Well, that two counts as one, both in English and Tamil. We can give you in Hindi also. <laughs> no, but your wife likes Hindi also. Where's your wife? Didn't come today. Suffering from fever. Hmm. All right, so... All of you, please fill up your house with Prabhupada's books. Yeah, if we read Prabhupada's books, then we'll always think of Krishna, because the only subject is Krishna. So we'll fill our house with Prabhupada's books, fill our minds with thoughts of Krishna, and in this way our hearts will be full of the bliss of Krishna Bhakti. It's a good idea? What do you think? Any opinions? All like, you'd all like to be blissful in Krishna Bhakti? So, Hare Krishna.